Hello, and welcome back to Chapter 13. Today we're going to look at 13.2, which deals with general angles and radian measure. Now, if you think back from when you were in geometry, if you recall, an angle is formed when two rays have a common endpoint, and that common endpoint is what we call the vertex. Any angle can be created when one side is fixed, and that fixed side is what we'll call the initial side, and the other ray is actually rotated around that fixed side, and the side that's being rotated is what we call the terminal side. When we have a fixed side with a terminal side, and the vertex is actually located at the origin, this is what we call an angle that is in standard position. And the last thing we need to remember is that when we're talking about a positive angle, a positive angle is actually going in the counterclockwise direction, which would be this direction here. If it's going in the clockwise direction, then this would be a negative angle. So to reiterate, if you look over here in the bottom corner, I have an angle with an initial side and that initial side is right here and the terminal side would be this side right here and this angle is going to go in this direction or the counterclockwise direction for a positive angle theta and recall theta is just a variable for an angle measure so let's go ahead and look at example one example one says to draw an angle with a given measure in standard position for part A, it says to draw a 240 degree angle. So if we start on our initial ray, which would be this axis right here, opposite of that, or this side here, would be 180 degrees. So I know that I have to go at least up to this point, plus a little bit more. And that little bit more is actually 60 degrees. So I'm going to go 60 degrees past 180 to get to my 240. So this whole angle right here is a 240 degree angle mark. Now for part B, if I start on my initial ray right here, I'm going to have to go around one full revolution to hit 360 plus another 140 degrees more to hit 500. So my 500 degree angle is a full revolution plus another 140 degrees which is the equivalent of a 140 degree angle measure as well. And for part C, I have a negative 50 degrees. And if you remember, a negative number means that we have a angle that's being measured in the clockwise direction. So I'm still going to start out on that initial ray and go in the clockwise direction, 50 degrees, until I hit my terminal ray here. Now back in example 1b, when we were talking about the angle of 500, we also discussed that 140 degrees was really the same angle as 500 degrees. And that's because these angles are said to be coterminal. Now they're coterminal because the two angles are in standard position and they have the same terminal angle. Okay, so this, this side right here they share, it's the terminal side of both of their angles. So whether I go around a full time plus another 140 or just the 140 degrees, they both share that common terminal side. Now coterminal angles can be found by either adding or subtracting any multiple of 360 degrees. So for example two, we want to find one positive angle and one negative angle that is coterminal with part A, which is a negative 45 degrees. So if I take a negative 45 degrees and add 360 degrees to this, we get 315 degrees. So this would be a positive angle. Now I can also take a negative 45 degrees and subtract 360 degrees from this. And this will give me a negative 405 degrees. So right here, I have two angles, one positive and one negative, that's coterminal with a negative 45 degrees. And remember, coterminal means it shares the same terminal side. 
Now we can do the same thing with 395 degrees. So 395 degrees plus 360 degrees is equal to 755 degrees. Or I can go 395 degrees minus 360 degrees and get 35 degrees. Now, up until today, all the angles that we have been using were measured in degrees. Now that's going to change. Today we're going to actually look at radians. And a radian is defined as the measure of an angle in standard position, so it does start out at the origin, whose terminal side intercepts an arc of length r. So here's our initial side. We have an, a terminal side here that's going to intersect our circle, okay, and we have this arc length here that is r. Now, there are two pi radians in one circle. That's because one pi is equal to 180 degrees, so two pi then has to equal 360 degrees. And if you look at this circle chart down here below, I've actually given you the equivalents. If you have, if you look at your 180 degree line right here, I think this makes the most sense that what you are really doing, if I go in here and I break this up into increments of 6, that's going to get me my increments of pi's over 3's and pi's over 6's. So at 30 degrees, I'm really dividing 180 degrees up into 6 increments. I'm going to go 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. I'm going to do the same thing. If I take pi, which is equal to 180 degrees, and divide that by 6, I end up with 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, which is really pi over 3, 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, and 6 pi over 6, which is pi and it's going to just repeat on down for this lower half. Now the exceptions to this are our 45 degree angles. This, when I take 180 degrees and I divide it in 4, that's how I get 45 degrees. So in this case, I have 1 pi over 4 because I've divided pi by 4. Here is 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, and then 4 pi over 4 would put you back at pi or 180 degrees. When we try to convert between degrees and radians, or vice versa, we need to use the conversion that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Now depending on if we're going from radians to degrees or degrees to radians will, di will dictate what um, we need to have in the numerator and what we need to have in the denominator. So let's look at some examples here. Example 3 says to convert 125 degrees to radians. So I have 125 degrees, and I need to eliminate my degrees. That's a unit. So to eliminate that, I know that degrees has to occur down here, and radians has to occur in the numerator. So I know that it takes 180 degrees for every pi radians. So now to simplify this, I'm going to take 125, multiply it by pi, and divide by 180, and you'll notice our degrees are going to cancel out, and that's going to leave us with a radian measure. And when we simplify 125 over 180, we get 25 pi divided by 36 and this would be your final answer. Now, on the other side of things, we have a negative pi over 12 radians, and if you're given a number that doesn't have any degree symbol with it, assume that it's in radians. I now need to convert my radians to degrees. So in order to cancel out this unit of radians, my radians have to occur in the denominator and degrees have to occur in the numerator. 
So I know again that I have 180 degrees for every pi radians. So now what's going to happen, my radians are going to cancel, my pi's are going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with a negative 180 degrees divided by 12, and this equals 15 degrees. And that would be my final answer. The last thing we're going to look at in section 13.2 deals with arc lengths and sectors. Now a sector, again, is a geometry term, and that is the region of a circle that is bounded by two radii and an arc. So if you look down here, I have a radius here, a radius here, and some arc that connects them. The central angle is formed by the two radii. So this theta measure right here is really my central angle. And if I want to find this length of S, or that arc length, I'm going to use the equation S equals R times theta. Now the critical piece to this is that theta has to be measured in radians. If you forget and do it in degrees, it will not come out correctly. So please remember to convert your theta angle measures to radians if they're not given to you in radians. And then again, if I want to find area, area is going to be equal to 1 half times your radius squared times theta, and theta has to be in radians. So let's look at an example that deals with arc length and area. Example 4 says to find the arc length and the area of a sector with a radius of 5 centimeters and a central angle of 45 degrees. So I'm just going to sketch this so I have an idea as to what we're looking at. We have a central angle, we're about 45 degrees, so we'll say 45 degrees. I really want to find the length from here to here. This is my S, and we said that S was equal to r times theta. So my r value is given up here as 5, and I have to plug in theta. Well, theta has to be in radians, and theta was equal or given to us as 45 degrees, so I'm going to convert this over to radians, and I'm going to set this up as a ratio, and I want to cancel out my degrees, so that will go in the bottom, and I want radians on top, and I have pi radians for every 180 degrees. My degrees are going to cancel, and I'm left with pi divided by 4 as my radian measure. So I'm actually going to plug pi over 4 in for theta and multiply, and I get 5 pi divided by 4 for my arc length. And this would be approximately equal to 3 point, we'll say 9, 3. And because we are given a unit, this would be centimeters. So 3.93 centimeters or 5 pi over 4 centimeters. Now, to find the area Area, we said, was equal to 1 half times r squared theta. So now all I have to do is plug in. I have 1 half, and my r value, we said, was 5. So we're going to square that. And theta, even though it was given to us in degrees, we did convert it already. We have pi over 4. And we're going to simplify from here. So... 5 squared is 25, so we end up with 25 pi divided by 8, and that's not going to simplify anymore, so I can either leave it like that and put my area units of centimeters squared, or we can divide it out and see that we get 9.8 centimeters squared, either one. And this actually concludes our 13-2 video. Have a good weekend.